My name is Deanne Hartono. I'm a program manager on the Windows Developer Platform team. I'm here to talk to you about how you can reduce your developer friction with Azure code signing. So let's begin. You've got your application, you're ready to go, but first you have to learn about the importance of code signing. Code signing is Windows best way to establish the identity of your application. It's also Windows best way to ensure the integrity of your application. In other words, we make sure that your app hasn't been tampered with. As a result, this provides a level of security when it comes to deploying your application. So let's understand the code signing process. The first thing you got to do is you have to get your certificate. You do this by going to a certificate authority and getting verified. Once you've been verified, you then are able to generate a private and public key to be used later on. You want to treat these keys as it's your driver's license, minus the awkward photo. The next step is to sign your application. Take the contents of your application and we hash it according to the Windows Authenticode standards. These hashes are then signed with the keys from the previous step and then embedded into the files with the public certificate data. The last step is to verify. Now the OS will check that the application is signed by somebody it knows by checking the certificate chain. It's also the time when the OS checks that the application has been tampered with because it checks that the signature is still valid. So there you go. You've gone through the code signing process. You might be thinking to yourself, why not just self-sign? I mean, anybody can create a certificate. Well, it goes back to the first point. There's no authority figure to verify your identity. So with code signing, there's different types of trust depending on how the certificate is used. Think about it in two buckets. The first one are considered privately trusted, meaning if you're in an enterprise and let's say you have these certain certificates that need to be trusted on certain devices, then you have your IT pro opt in to trust these certificates. On the other hand, you'll have these uh, what we call the publicly trusted certificates. Now these are, are more used for developers who want to distribute their application in a more broader audience. So these certificates must be trusted by default by the OS. We couldn't talk about certificates without certificate security. Remember, your private keys represent you as the signer. And now keys, um, if they're ever leaked, can, uh, can really have a detrimental effect. Your identity could be stolen or impersonated. So we recommend you not store your keys on your dev machine. Even better if you have best practice and have a hardware backed solution. So you might think to yourself, all right, how can I leverage code signing to even lock down my enterprise? Well, you could use Windows Defender Application Control or WDAC for short. WDAC is a critical line of defense when it comes to malware. It's also a way for you to secure your devices with app control. So as an IT pro, you get to choose what type of apps run on your machine. So if you have apps that are coming from unknown developers that might have malware, you can easily block them. And with code signing, it makes your policies be created and maintained in a more manageable and scalable way. So think about Windows Defender Application Control as a way to define the circle of trust on your devices. And a baseline, what you could do is you could only allow the OS components to run your devices. And then um, as an IT pro, you can get creative and generate policies based on the hash rules, file types, and file paths, such that only certain applications will run on your machine. Now, with code signing, you can also create signer rules, which are really more preferred from a security and manageability perspective. So now I'm going to hand it over to Jordan, who's going to walk us through the Windows Defender application control and how it works really well with code signing. Thanks, Deanne. My name is Jordan Gurton. I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Enterprise and Security team. Today, I'll be showing you how easy it is to protect your enterprise devices using code signing and WDAC. WDAC uses policy rules to define trust for the apps that you want to run on your enterprise devices. Again, these can be rules based on the code signing certificate properties or application attributes like path, file name, or hash. Now, this is the WDAC policy I have defined to allow this our line of business application called Hello World. I have created 24 hash rules to allow this the first three versions of the unsigned app. 
I have to repeat this for each new version of the app that our dev department releases. This is only for one app. I also have to repeat this for each new application our org uses. So when I attempt to load the newest version of the app without first updating the policy, you'll see that WDAC will block the app and show this UI. Each new version of the app requires new entries in the policy. I will now show you how code signing drastically improves controlling your line of business apps. WDAC policies can be created using the PowerShell commandlets or with the easy to use WDAC wizard app created to make life simpler. We offer three base templates for the policy. The first is Windows works mode, which allows trust for apps shipped in box by Windows, the Microsoft Store, and Office 365 apps. Allow Microsoft mode builds off of Windows works and also allows trust for Microsoft apps. Finally, signed and reputable is a policy which uses Microsoft Defender's intelligence security graph, which gathers intelligence on the reputation of millions of apps in our ecosystem. Only files with good reputation will be allowed. At this point, you can configure the policy rules. You can hover above the label of each rule to learn more or refer to the documentation. At this point in the process, we want to create a custom rule based on the Azure code signing code signing certificate. To create a custom rule, set the rule type equal to publisher and we'll allow the code signing certificate properties. We're going to browse for a reference file to set to create the rule off of. Select the hello world MSIX file. This is what we'll be basing our rule off of. You can tailor the specificity of the publisher rule. Since I want to allow any app that is being signed by uh, the code signing certificate issued by this CA and this publisher, I set the slider to the publisher and click create rule. Let's take a look at the policy that the WDAC wizard created. So I created this one signer rule here. Now this one rule, which is based on our code signing cert that is, that is issued by Microsoft Azure code signing, will allow list all future versions of the app and any new apps signed with the certificate. There's a huge improvement to creating hash rules per app version. We replace every single rule here with one single rule based on the signer information. This new policy can, de can be deployed to all managed machines so that our devices are secure against unknown apps in malware. Again, all new signed versions of the app will not require updates to the WDAC policy. For more information on WDAC, please visit ak.ms slash WDAC. The wizard can also be downloaded from ak.ms slash WDAC wizard. Thanks, Jordan. Now, we've chatted with our developers and we've gotten feedback about code signing and we need to address this. So the first point of friction would be acquiring certificates. Now, these can be costly depending on the type of certificate you're trying to get. So this is a barrier for certain developers. The second one is securing your certificates can be difficult. And lastly, the overall maintaining and just getting your certificates can be tedious. So what are we going to do about it? Introducing Azure Code Signing. Azure Code Signing manages your certificates and keys on your behalf. All you really need is to have a signer role. So as a developer or an IT pro, the service will sign for you. You get to use Microsoft's proven expertise when it comes to key infrastructure, and it's easy to adopt and it will integrate with your existing tool sets. So now I'm going to hand it over to Daniel, who's going to walk us through the Azure code signing experience. Thanks, Jan. Hi, my name is Daniel Gonzalez, and I'm a PM on the Microsoft code signing team. I'm here to walk you through a quick demo showing you how Azure code signing works in your CI/CD pipeline. For this example, I'll be using GitHub Actions from the perspective of an LLB developer. 
I plan on signing the application Jordan allowed earlier in the WDAC policy he pushed to our environment. So let's get started with creating a release of the simple MSIX application. So to do that, I will draft a new release. Here we are. So this will kick off a new action, which is right here. And while this is queuing up, I just want to mention that GitHub Actions isn't the only integration we'll have. We also plan on integrating with Azure Pipelines as well as the other leading CI-CD solutions and Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code and more to come. So let's check the build. All right, so as you can see here, we have the signed package fragment right here as well as some of the other uh, pieces of our build. And then let's actually take a look at that fragment itself here in the workflow file. Scroll down. And so here we actually have the signed package. And before we actually do the signing, we just set up the environment, extract the tag name, and then we build and package that actual application. And then here we have finally signed the application. And there's only a couple fields that are part of this fragment, including the Azure sign client ID and Azure sign client secret. And those are simply for authentication. So this will just authorize you to use the Azure code signing service, as well as the file name where you put the artifact that's going to be created. And in the future, we plan on adding a couple other fields, the main one being the type of certificate used. And so we, we plan on offering four different types. In this scenario, in this example, we are using the enterprise signing um, certificate, and so that essentially allows you to authorize applications for your environment, your enterprise, and that also includes third-party applications that may not be built by your internal organization, but you want to include and support uh, into your enterprise. And then the others are release, trial, and test. And release is for assigning trusted applications for all of Windows, for all users, and then the test and trial are mainly for internal builds, testing, making sure that your pipelines are working. The trial one is the one that you get when you first sign up that's not trusted by anything, so you can kind of just play around with the service itself. And you may think, okay, so we have this service and we want it to be you know, protected, private, secure. Um, how can we control the people who actually have access to this service within your actual environment and enterprise? And we do that by using role-based access control. So there you can pick and choose who exactly has access to the service and what type of signing they have access. So you may have a, different groups of developers who may only build internal LOB apps and they'd only use the enterprise signing uh, certificate. And then you may have a team that releases applications ex to the exterior um, that can use the, re the release type of certificate. Similar with the trial and test, you can pick and choose who exactly you want them or who exactly can use those certificates. And so let's take a look at how our build is going. And it's building and packaging right now. And just to mention, you know, this won't be the only file type we support, MSIX. Uh, we plan on also supporting EXC, MSI, and some of the other leading application types. A lot of the ones supported right now by sign tool will also be supported by Azure Code Signing. So it'll make it an easy transition. So the signing finally kicked off here. And let's just wait a couple, hopefully only a couple seconds for that to complete. And then we can actually download this application and open it. Awesome. OK, so the application is now signed. We're going to upload and post. Awesome, okay. So let's open up this application here. It should be under releases, version 48. There it is downloading. All right, let's open it up. And as you can see, the application is trusted as your code signing team. And you can actually install this application and open it up. And because we have Jordan's WDAC policy on this machine, it should be allowed and authorized, so we should have any issues.
Oh, I put it up on the other screen. Here it is. Awesome. See? See how easy that was? All right, Dan, back to you. Wow, Daniel, that was so amazing. Thank you so much for walking us through that. So to recap, I'm gonna go over the Azure code signing experience with you. The first thing you gotta do is you have to sign up for this service. Once you've been verified, go ahead and develop and sign with your existing tool set. And remember, Azure code signing will generate the certificates and sign for you. Once you have your application that has been signed, go ahead and distribute to your preferred endpoints. Some key features I want to highlight about Azure code signing is that it's secure and seamless. It'll integrate with the first and third party tool sets. You'll be given a dashboard so that you get to see the signing history as well as manage who gets to use this service. You'll leverage Microsoft's proven expertise when it comes to code signing and the service will support multiple files. So in the demo, you saw that it was signing an MSIX package, but it will also support multiple file types. So I want to leave you with this. Sign up for our Azure code signing preview by emailing us at Azure code signing tap at Microsoft.com. To learn more about the technologies that you saw today, visit our websites.